Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Bo Akers. And I'm Guadalupe Arenas. Secret Service Chief Julia Pearson accepts full responsibilities for the security branch at the White House on September 19. Today she sat opposite House committee members answering questions about the branch committee. Member Stephen Lynch called the break in a significant failure. I wish to God you you protected the White House like you're protecting your reputation here today. I wish you spent that time and that effort to protect the American president. A while at the White House, Spokeman says, while the president and first family are concerned about the branch, they will have confidence in the Secret Service. The United States has a new security contract with Afghanistan. Afghanistan's new president, Ashraf Ghani, signed the agreement the day after he took office. The new contract allows nearly 10,000 U.S. troops to stay in Afghanistan for another year. The pact has been deemed necessary to keep Taliban forces from regaining control over the region as international troops leave by the end of the year. The former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, refused to sign the pact. Rescuers have found five more bodies on the volcanic slopes of Japan's Mount Antig. 36 people are now presumed dead. About 200 people were believed to be on the mountain when Japan's second highest volcano erupted on Saturday. Seismologists say no signs of major volcanic activity has been detected. Saturday's eruption is the first fatal eruption at Antig in modern times. Conditions on, on the mountain remain dangerous, sus suspending rescuers' plans to recover at least another 2,000 bodies. The Japan Meteorological Agency warned another major eruption could come within the week. In Hong Kong, protesters continue to demonstrate for a democratic election in 2017. One student says she wants change. The main target is to have democracy, a true democracy. And for more detail, um, uh, this is a very important time for Hong Kongers to have a really true democracy system. Like uh, we should not uh, accept a political reform that have a selective system. Hong Kong Chief Executive C.Y. Leung says China will not change its stance on Hong Kong. Protesters fear more violence will be used against them. Hong Kong police have used 87 tear gas canisters against the crowd so far. A Hong Kong government spokeswoman says some 60 people have been injured and 89 people have been arrested. Undocumented students will have an additional method of paying for college with the help of a new loan program. Matador News reporter Jose Science is live with more on the story. Governor Brown has signed Senate Bill 1210 that will allow undocumented students in the CSU and UC systems to take out federal student loans starting next year. This program is expected to cost the UC system up to $3.6 million per year and the CSU $1.5 million. Undocumented students, they want to learn and, and with like tuition high and you know just give them more commitment if they get the you know, student loans and like if they want to get like a, a their citizenship, I mean, it, it's more like they have to pay their student loans or, you know, it gives them more, you know, like more responsibility. And, and I think it's great. I think that uh, the situation is actually changing. It's not the same anymore. People are not looking at uh, undocumented citizens uh, much in the same way that they were looking at them uh, 10, 20 years ago. So uh, I think we're making progress. 3,000 undocumented students are expected to take out these loans for the 2015-2016 school year. They can borrow up to $4,000 per year with a lifetime maximum of $20,000. Once the students graduate, they will have up to six months to find employment and start paying the loans back. In CSUN campus, this is Jose Sainz. Back to you guys in the studio. Governor Brown has signed a statewide law banning single-use plastic bags. The National Coalition of Plastic Bag Manufacturers is already saying it wants to repeal the law. The ban starts in grocery stores in 2015 and will go into convenience stores and pharmacies in 2016. Californians will have to use reusable bags or pay a 10 cent fee for paper bags. Governor Brown signs a law making California the first in the nation 
to define sexual consent as a yes means yes. The bill requires colleges to investigate sexual assault with a new set of standards. Faculty reviewing complaints will need special training so that victims are not asked inappropriate questions. The bill will also require access to counseling, health care services, and other resources. California has already exhausted its firefighting budget three months into the fiscal year and just before entering the worst of the fire season. The department has responded to 5,000 fires, almost twice as many as usual. Experts say the hot, dry weather is the reason. The Department of Forestry and Fire Protection has already spent its $209 million budget fighting fires. Governor ba Brown is requiring the state to shift $70 million from a reserve fund. The department has exceeded its budget in previous years. Virginia police have linked the current disappearance of a University of Virginia student to another young woman who went missing in 2009. Jesse Matthews was arrested in Texas and brought back to Virginia to face charges for the abduction of Hannah Graham. Police say Matthews' arrest gave them a significant break in the case. Morgan's mother wants people to remember that her daughter has been missing for almost two weeks. Yet Jesse Matthews is being held without bond and is scheduled to appear in court on Thursday. Now let's toss it to John Solace with health. Thanks, Bo. Africa's most populated country may have beaten its Ebola outbreak. Since the first case in July, there have been 20 cases in Nigeria with 900 others exposed. The CDC says every known case has either died or recovered from the disease, but the cure rate was unusually high. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation assisted Nigeria in defeating Ebola after converting its polio command center to an Ebola emergency center. Meanwhile, in Liberia, 3,700 children have lost a parent due to the outbreak and are facing abandonment. UN Children's Agency UNICEF says it is hoping to train 2,500 Ebola survivors to care for the children. Children represent 15% of recorded deaths caused by Ebola. Pediatricians are recommending IUDs or hormonal implants for sexually active teenage girls. Birth control pills and condoms are the most common methods used by teens to prevent pregnancy, but doctors say these methods don't always work because teens often forget to use them. Both the IUD and hormonal implant are long-acting methods of birth control that are nearly 100% effective. Although the medical procedure of inserting an IUD or implant is more expensive, the overall cost in the long run is much more or less. Let's turn it over to Brianna Ruffalo, who has the biggest business news of the day. eBay says it's separating from PayPal. Shares for eBay went up about 7% in morning trading after the announcement. eBay CEO John Donahoe has been firm in his belief that splitting from PayPal is the wrong move for the company. He says he will step down as CEO and have no management role in either company after the separation. PayPal is expected to have 1 billion transactions by the end of the year. Forbes has released its new 400 list of America's wealthiest people. Bill Gates keeps his number one spot for the 21st year in a row. Warren Buffett comes in at number two and Oracle founder Larry Ellison at number three. One newcomer on the list is Elizabeth Holmes, a Stanford dropout who invented a device for drawing blood with the prick of a finger. Holmes is the youngest woman on the list and youngest self-made female billionaire with an estimated net worth of four and a half billion. Some other newcomers include the founders of Uber and the messaging service WhatsApp. Now John Salas has the recap on Monday Night Football and the latest on the NFL. The Kansas City Chiefs flew by the New England Patriots in a 41-14 victory that handed Bill Belichick his worst loss as a coach of the team. Alex Smith threw for 248 yards with three touchdown passes, and Jamal Charles had a big game his first game back with three total touchdowns. Today, the NFL says Chief Safety Hussan Abdullah should not have been penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct. The penalty came after Abdullah intercepted Tom Brady in the fourth quarter and slid to a knee to pray. NFL officials say the officiating protocol in this situation is not the flag of player who goes on the ground as part of a religious expression. The FCC is dumping the sports blackout rule after an anonymous 5-0 vote. The rule had prevented cable and satellite users from seeing games when not enough tickets were sold to fill the stadium. Although the NFL defended this rule to ensure attendance, lawmakers say the rule unfairly punished football fans. As of now, Los Angeles football fans are unaffected, but that may change in the future. AEG is seeking a six-month extension in its plan to pursue an NFL team and construct a multi-billion dollar football stadium. 
Additionally, a new development plan to expand the LA Convention Center and build another hotel at LA Live is in the works. Now back to Brianna Ruffalo with the latest in entertainment news. Walmart is refusing to take full blame for a June car accident that injured comedian Tracy Morgan and killed his friend and fellow comedian James McNair. Walmart is saying in a court filing that the passenger's injuries were caused by not wearing seatbelts. The crash occurred when a Walmart truck rear-ended Morgan's limousine on its way back from a show in Delaware. Morgan has filed a lawsuit against Walmart seeking punitive and compensatory damages. Well, students are waiting for the beat to drop this Saturday at Big Show 2014. Ken Harvey is in the sundial room with the details. All right, thank you guys. I'm here with Eric Planis, the senior producer for AS Productions. Hi. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect at this year's event? Yeah, so this year you can expect a lot more than last year. We are continuing our tradition with our doing our food trucks, as well as um, we have our sponsorship with Universal Studios, Pizza Rev, and Rockstar, so they're going to be coming out, giving out some free product, and have some ghouls in the lines to get in the Halloween spirit, um, as well as you know, our art wall and our rabbit holes, and a massive stage with our artists on it. Great, okay. And do you feel the student body is as excited this year as they have been in past events? I feel like they are. Um, I feel it's a struggle this year because I know the tickets did go up, so a lot of the students are, you know, kind of, you know, a little upset with that, but I feel the production value that we're putting into it, it's going to make up for that. So students are excited, um, so we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely for laid back Luke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I know that AS doesn't, they're not currently seeking to make a profit off mm -hmm. of Big Show. Can you tell me about why that is? Yeah, so Associated Students is a nonprofit organization, so any money that we do bring in from Big Show, from the ticket cost, it goes directly back to the students through multiple programs that Associated Students does. Associated Students, we do um, productions, we do the comedy show, a lecture, the big show and a big political event as well as some minor events here so all that goes back to the students so if we do make any revenue from this year's show it'll go on to next year's show um, to have a bigger production value there great okay and will people be able to buy tickets like at the door on saturday or so tickets are still currently available there's a small amount that's left for forty dollars um, if we do not sell out by that time there will be a ticket booth um, for people to buy their tickets, and they're able to buy them $40 for their, as, as long as they have a CSUN student ID. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Of course. All right. So Big Show is this Saturday, and back to you guys in the studio. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Bo Akers. And I'm Guadalupe Arenas. Have a great day.